Another Thursday and another injured offensive lineman for the Dallas Cowboys. Zach Martin was added to the injury report with a groin injury. Now, he was listed as limited. Typically, not always, but typically what ends up happening in that scenario is they were out there to start, they suffered some injury, a tweak, a strain, a pull, whatever, and they left practice. So by definition, limited. They were there for part of it. Hopefully this is just like the Tyron Smith injury where he was limited at practice, but he's played in the game, was just fine, but it certainly bears monitoring if Zach Martin is unable to go to go because of that groin injury. We'll keep you guys covered. Not a lot known right now. Still very early. Maybe we'll have an update in the near future. TJ Bass, by the way, would be the one, I would assume, who would sub in at right guard in the event Martin is out. Another injured player here, Brandon Cooks, is dealing with a sprained MCL. As it is a, It's a grade one sprain, by the way, so he does have a chance to play. Now, we'll get into the should he play, should he not play argument. It's a very valid one because, oh, you know, you don't want to jeopardize injuries and making things worse there. He did not practice on Thursday. Now, Cook said this about his injury, saying, I'm just working, and we'll see where we're at. I feel good. If he plays, he said he would not be limited. Now, that's what the player said. I do think a sprained MCL in week two does not bode well for him being out there. If this was, you know, the postseason, this was December or January, maybe it'd be a bit more aggressive, but you don't want to risk further injury. The last thing you want to do is be without Brandon Cooks for a long portion of the season, and then you're kind of stuck right back in the same spot, you know, of your receiving core where you're banking on Gallup and banking on Tolbert. I feel better about those guys this year. We'll get to that more in depth in a little bit, but it is, it's a red flag. We can be honest from that perspective. There also might be some semblance of gamesmanship here of saying, ah, we'll see if he's good to go. You know, you saw, you had Jerry Jones on Monday saying, Tyron, or Tyler Smith and Donovan Wilson getting closer. One guy is, one guy isn't. Stay tuned for more on that in a little bit. And though Cooks' numbers from week one don't look that great, he also drew two flags that resulted in first downs, and one of which was a 37-yard flag. So all of a sudden, you could easily make it, if it wasn't for the PI or the alleged PI, whatever, three catches for nearly 60 yards. That's pretty good for your first game in a, in a borderline just torrential downpour. So... I don't want to jeopardize Cooks. I would be cautious here. We shall see what ends up happening with Cooks as things begin to, to move forward on Friday, but not practicing Thursday is not a great sign. So should Brandon Cooks play in week two? Y for yes, N for no. This is going to be today's pinned comment. If the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and go vote. Now, if Cooks can't go, I do think this is what your wide receiver depth chart looks like, by the way. CeeDee Lamb, Brandon Cooks, Michael Gallup are your top three. If Cooks can't go, two names to monitor. Jalen Brooks might be active if Cooks is not active. Kevontae Turpin and Jalen Tolbert. Now, Turpin actually got utilized for about the same usage he had in his entire first season in one week. He had five touches, should have been three catches. He dropped the pass on a simple bubble screen that could have been a fun play. Scored a touchdown. Turpin is a part of this offense. It's very clear there are packages for him in this Cowboys offense. But he is still kind of more of a gadget player. He is still more of a, a maybe a package player is the proper terminology for that. Jalen Tolbert would probably get first crack at the wide receiver rotation type of deal, you know, the, the, the typical ish, uh, st standard there, in the event that Cooks can't go, of like, you're just in your standard 11 personnel, three receiver reps, Tolbert's the first one out there. He looked really great in the preseason training camp. I would like a, having a fourth receiver who can contribute is something the Cowboys did not have last year. Hopefully they have one this season. Now today's show is made possible by Rocket Money. Rocket Money makes it very easy to cancel the unwanted and unused subscriptions that you have. There are subscriptions for everything these days. Streaming services, fitness programs, not that I use those. 
And it feels sometimes impossible to keep tabs on what you're paying for every month. So I'm a big fan of Rocket Money. It is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills all in one place. Most people think they're spending around 80 bucks a month on subscriptions. The actual number is closer to 200. That's what happens when you got streaming services for you used to watch for one show, Apple TV, or free trials for delivery you used once for the discount and then you haven't used since then. Rocket Money also lets you monitor all your expenses in one place, recommends custom budgets based on your past spending, and they'll even send you alerts when you've reached your spending limits. With over 3 million users and counting, Rocket Money customers have saved an average of $720 a year. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash cowboys. That's rocketmoney.com slash cowboys. Links in the comments and the description of today's show. All right, more on the injury report here for your Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Tyler Smith worked on the side again at practice. Uh, He was listed as a DNP. I would be inclined to think he will not be out there for the Cowboys, unless they can get something on th- on Friday, which I would love. It's a lot of a lot of DNPs for Tyler Smith. They'll give him a chance. I'm not overly confident right now. Donovan Wilson, however, was upgraded to limited. He put the pads on for the first time at a practice since that injury almost two months ago. Here, he's trending upwards. Might still be limited on Friday. Might be on a bit a bit of a pitch count uh, in week two, but he is at least getting some practice reps in. Jordan Lewis, meanwhile, will do more at practice. Now, he's not on the injury report at all, but the Cowboys have been in a ramp-up stage for the, uh, for the corner as they look to find a way to get him back on the football field and not rush him back either. Pick the score for me of the Cowboys against the Jets, the Week 2 matchup that no longer features Aaron Rodgers. Sound off for me in the comment section with your score predictions right now. Speaking of the Jets, there's been some ideas, speculation, maybe theories is a good word to throw in there too, uh, about the Cowboys finding a way to trade Cooper, rush the Jets, get some awesome draft pick back. Jerry Jones, for what it was worth, did not seem to be a big fan of that idea. The Cowboys would save $1.5 million, not something Jerry Jones seems very interested in, saying, quote, I can't imagine what it would be to make that type of trade. But the facts are, just as they do, we could need rush in a play, as we did last year. We did the year before. Boy, especially when you got all the promise we got to compromise yourself with the depth at that position would be very unlikely. The Cowboys simply put, like what Cooper Rush brings as a backup quarterback, They like what he adds in in that quarterback room as the bus driver if injuries happen, they have to plug somebody else in. They feel confident that Rush can handle that. They like Lance. Lance is not ready yet. I think we all know that one. So I would not get my hopes up, even beyond what Jerry had said, for a Rush trade. Now we will be live for our Cowboys vs. Jets Week 2 NFL Watch Party right here on the channel We're going to get things started at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah, we're going to go earlier than we normally do, an hour 25 before. We'll have plenty of stuff to talk about. We'll have some fun. There should be plenty of Super Chats as well. Make sure you guys tune in, 4.25 p.m. Eastern kickoff. Hit that sub button if you haven't already done so right now. Kind of a a borderline bonkers uh, article that wasn't actually that bad of an article, really got twisted into some clickbait stuff out there. So ESPN, the insider piece, was five quarterbacks, the next highest paid QB in the NFL. Joe Burrow gets his. They're talking about, you know, Tua Tungavailoa, he's due for a new deal. Dak Prescott's on the list because he's one of the quarterbacks due for a new deal in the next, you know, two-ish years, a year, somewhere in that time frame. The article did briefly explore the option of cutting or trading Dak from a monetary perspective. As we'll get into, that is true, but there are some some buts involved there. And the the majority of the pitch was, well, the contract talks were bad, so if it was bad again, 
maybe Dallas bails, which I think is a pretty extreme response, but we'll get into it. Dak so far has actually been a very cheap quarterback. He is, is in the new deal that he signed. First year is this year. It's gone over $20 million. It's, it's at 26.83. That's almost $14 million less than Mahomes is making this year on the salary cap. It's been very affordable. But next year, it balloons to nearly $60 million. I think pretty much every person watching does not think or thinks that, that you can't have that happen. Now, that's true, and there are things you can do as we'll get into it, but I do think saying in the same article that they will likely extend him, that was the gist of the piece. They could also cut him. It's like kind of a, a bonkers thing to put, like when you didn't say the exact same thing about Jared Goff, and then the aggregators all ran with the more clickbaity one. So let's actually break down what your contract options are with Dak Prescott after this season ends. You have four of them basically. If you do nothing, $59.46 million cap hit. If you trade or cut Dak Prescott, who as a reminder, has a no trade clause before June 1st, you lose $2.46 million. If you do that after June 1st, you can always designate it a post June 1st, you do save 25.46. There's no more guaranteed money on this upcoming salary. If you restructure him, you can save up to 21.86. There's some flexibility there in the number with how much you would, you would adjust the, the restructure bonus based on push it off into the future. So it's fungible there. An extension would save up to $26 million. As weird as it might sound, the simplest path to saving money is to actually extend Dak Prescott. And that can even be on a massive, huge contract. Maybe you don't save all 26 but you can get that cap it down from 59 to somewhere in the below $30 million range. Like you can, or around 30, which Mahomes and these guys are going to cost over 40. So you'll be okay if that's the route you want to go. It's not, got to cut it. No, restructure extension, extension most, most impactfully, would save you just as much, if not more.